Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the show. Welcome back. It's another Wednesday afternoon and we are here to talk about an episode getting pretty damn close to the number 200. It's unbreakable. We're freaking pumped. We have a crazy guest. We'll see you guys in just one quick second. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's action movie anatomy. There it is. Yes. We, we told him it was coming. Yeah, he knew. He knew. He was, he was just playing it cool. Didn't want to explode like does. we did. That's what movie stars do. That's what movie stars do, and we have one in the studio. Guys, this is nuts. What a crazy, crazy day. I can't believe we're we're covering this movie with a little star of the movie. Yeah, like, this actually so cool. like one of the top build dudes in Glass. We're so excited, but we're actually talking Unbreakable today. Yeah. And I think you carry the weight in this movie. We'll, we'll, <laughs> Big time. we'll get there. Big we'll time. get there. Big time. Uh, Spencer Treat Clark in the studio. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming. You and I met a few years back. Mm -hmm. uh, I was covering Animal Kingdom, which is a show that... Are you currently still on? Yep, you we are? just started season one, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Working on it right now. Yeah, yeah, and Animal uh, Kingdom... Uh, yeah, back oh, sorry, then. season four, rather. That's season But one? I met yeah. you when you guys had yeah. just wrapped season one, actually. Yep. Uh, that, that was a crazy... Uh, a crazy premiere, right? It was like they they had like mm. turned that whole thing into like a half pipe, and they it was like did. sand oh, and wow. a beach. Yeah, it was super cool. They had like X Games athletes doing crazy stuff. We all got Animal Kingdom skateboards. I yeah. still have mine. I still yeah. have mine too. Yeah. You have a skateboard An from Animal, Animal Kingdom. It has Animal Kingdom TNT on the one. It's a brand new skateboard. You'll never ride it. It's as bad as bread on the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, have you seen the movie Animal Kingdom? I have. Yeah. The, it's dude, fantastic. I love that movie. It's so good. Yeah, I was so excited when the series yeah, came out. Yeah. yeah, it's a really good show. Um, so that's where we met, and you're here, which is really exciting exciting because uh, the fans were were clamoring for us to talk about Unbreakable and I was like one time I got to interview this guy yeah. who's literally starring in that movie I wonder if he wants to come on the show and so and so here we are I'm glad you reached out because I you know I've obviously answered questions about Unbreakable over the years but I've yeah. never really done like a an in-depth yeah deeper proper. dive so it'll be fun like maybe I'll remember some stuff that I've forgotten We'll see. Well, I know you just finished the press tour for Glass, right? Because mm -hmm. it just opened this last weekend, and yeah. so you were in New York doing all the whole interviews, getting asked the same question like 175 <laughs> times in a row, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. but so when you were a kid doing Unbreakable, you didn't get to do that press tour with them because no, I mean, I, I went and did like I did the red carpet stuff and did a little bit of interview stuff, but I'd never done like I didn't do like the press yeah, yeah. junket. Um, so yeah, I just did that recently. It was fun. Like I I did it with um with Anya Taylor Joy, and so oh, yeah, she's I great. had like somebody to bounce off of, and yeah. But yeah, we did like three days of nonstop interviews, and but it was it was actually pretty fun. She's pretty cool. funny. I, I enjoyed. I talked to her last summer, and yeah, uh, I enjoyed her. So I'm sure she's awesome. Sure, she was entertaining she's to hang so out fun. with for a few days in a row. Yeah, she's watching. And, and it's now. cool. Like people are people. You know, people want to know about the movie, so it's like absolutely. And it was a fun. It was a cool experience. Oh, I mean, so. well, let's. I mean, before we get into the show, like we always do, we mm -hmm. can talk about that a little bit because you were telling us you were actually camping when Split mm -hmm. came out, and you had no idea that yeah it was a sequel essentially. Yeah, I mean, I I had no. Knight had talked about it, like, over the over time, he said, you know, even after Unbreakable finished, he was like, yeah, I want to do another one, and, but I didn't expect it to happen, especially 18 years later, I think everybody had sort of forgotten it was even a possibility, yeah. um, and then, yeah, I was camping, and the weekend split came out, and I turned my phone on, and it took it off airplane mode, and I had just was, like, blown up by people being like, have you seen this movie, and I was like, guys, like, I, I get it, like, I worked with Knight many years ago, like, I'm gonna see it, I'm really excited <laughs> about it. Um, but they're like, no, you have to. And then someone did ruin it for me eventually, but it was still like amazing to go in there and be like, huh? And then, you know, there were chatter about the sequel. And, and then it was still like a couple months before I talked to, um, you know, Knight c called me and yeah. has, had a call set and said, hey, you know, will you, he actually, it was funny. He was like, you know, I, I, it's actually like a, a pretty sizable role and I'm, I'm writing a scene between you and I right now. Cause he was actually writing the yeah. script. Oh, the wow. Um, which is that that scene is now obviously in the movie. The electronic store, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or the, uh, the, the security store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Just let him go. So, for a while. but yeah, and then it was <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was a few months, even after that, before I got to read a script. Yeah, because obviously they're so under wraps about that stuff. Andy was still writing it. So, did I, you think you were going to be involved with with? Uh, with a, the next film when you'd seen or like when even when you, even when you just saw the text like mm. did you ever think that like they were going to bring the son back if they were going to bring him back no i had zero expectations i hoped obviously um but you know the the other reality is like i had no idea what the role was part of me was like i'm going to die in the first sure. 5 minutes <laughs> and they're going to raise the stakes you know it's cuz they got you know it's yeah. um 
So, you know, it was awesome for me to read the script and see that it was a, a full lead developed. It's a, a substantial awesome role. role. Yeah, it yeah. was really cool. Not that I would have not, <laughs> come, like, not, I would have been psyched to die in the first five minutes, too. But Yeah, um, so would I. So would I. <laughs> and then I also, like, I, I joke about this, but I think part of me, like, the cynic, cynic in me, like, genuinely thought maybe that they would, you know, if they would, you know, if they hire Chris Hemsworth or whatever, you know, to be the Thor like Joseph Dunn. Oh, Joseph grew up <laughs> really yeah, differently. He really grew up. Maybe yeah. maybe maybe like superimpose your face onto Hemsworth or something. Yeah, 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 exactly. just, and then you just claim that no that's just that's actually that's me, just me. Yeah, that's just, just my like, body. Put it so, in time. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> tell you guys. Um, just like getting making gains like you and McAvoy were just like working yeah. out together. He just was getting jacked. Big. He, he got was, real big. Dude he's, McAvoy was huge. Massive. Yeah. He was massive. Yeah. This guy Magnus Lidback who's um he's a celebrity Stranger does like Gal Gadot. His name is Magnus. It's Alicia fantastic. Vikander. He's like an actual yeah, Viking. Yeah, yeah. Like he's, really, he's so funny. Yeah. Um, but he's just, him like, or, the sweetest guy. Him or Ben Robson. Um, Ben's huge. Ben's massive, right? Ben's he's like six five. Massive. Like I just, I mean, <laughs> again, we started season four recently. Ben plays one of the characters on, on Animal Kingdom, and um, I always, you know, he's in the UK during the, during the off season and stuff. He's around, but um, I was just standing next to him, and I'm like, I forget how damn. Huge, you his are. shoulders. Oh, I was intimidated. And little, yeah, Liking, carpet, I was that's very a, intimidated. He was. Well, he bigger. told me about it. Yeah. it's way bigger than me. Yeah, he's Huge. real big. You're like he was actually you? a horrifying man. <laughs> he's like a beard, <laughs> yeah. like super nice. Yeah, um, really but, nice guy. Uh, you're six two. I'm six two, and he's large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's big. He made me feel real small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so Magnus, and and so he was training McAvoy, and so you yeah. kind of got to see that process a little bit. Yep. Yeah, because I was wondering when watching Glass, I was like, "Is is McAvoy like that's all real, right? That's not like a oh, body yeah. double. It's, and it's he just put it him. on quick too, because he was playing Charles Xavier like right before. Like, right, he's from also one movie to the next. Because he's not that big of a guy, right? He's like he's a six foot maybe. Mm, I think he's maybe even a little shorter than that. Maybe okay. he's like. 5'10". You know, guys that are 5'10", 5'11", we actually have a lot going for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we you know fully just dive into all the stuff, I want to remind everybody here, uh, this is Action Movie Anatomy. We talk action movies on the show. Maybe more than action movies. We talk sweet movies on the show. Yeah, so we, we used to talk only action movies that adhered to these four basic rules, but we've kind of uh, expanded a bit, and Unbreakable is definitely an example of us expanding. The first rule that we used to always abide by is the hero always plays by their own rules. I think by the end of the movie, it feels like Willis does start to play by his own rules. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. It also feels like he plays by the rules of comic books, right? Yeah, right. Like, like that he has to follow this kind of lineage or the rules that are set out. I mean, you're a huge comic book fan. I am, yep. And, uh, yeah, it's like he kind of he buys into it, right? He, I think he almost, you know, in the weirdest way possible, and this plays into the theory that maybe Sam Jackson is the hero of Glass, he almost plays hmm. by Sam Jackson's rules. And if you think hmm. of Sam Jackson as the hero that's trying to expose the idea that there are supers in the world, he's kind of, but that's like getting real deep. Right. He kind of, I think in this movie, in Unbreakable, Bruce Willis kind of plays by his own rules. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I think also to some degree, his arc is that he go, he like figures out that he, that the rules necessarily don't, like that's part of his arc is that he feels the rules don't apply to him because I think the biggest thing holding him back is like his belief in, yeah. him, in himself. Right. Um. So... You know, even like the weightlifting scene and all that stuff, it's like he's never, he just assumes he can't lift more weight. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, maybe I can't. Maybe I am like insanely strong. So. I lied. And the funny part <laughs> is, I love that line. It's been, yeah. it's been 19 years since that movie came out. I watched yeah. it in theaters. And to this day, when I watched it again for like whatever, the fifth time now, the two best scenes are your scenes with him. It's either it's both yeah. it's both the, the table oh, at the end so with three. the it's the gunshot and yeah. the table at the end yeah, yeah, and yeah. the weightlifting. They're the three best scenes. And the weightlifting scene is the one that I re always remembered after that movie. It's the one that always just like for whatever reason in your head you can imagine being a kid and doing that with your yeah. dad. Yeah. And how crazy it would feel, right? Yeah, I remember yeah. that scene do like doing it so vividly. Yeah, so yeah. it actually started off with me. Um, like hitting a punching bag yeah. for a cinema, like kind of being all tough and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Never made it in. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So rule yeah, number two, the hero and the villain are always the smartest people beings, things in the room. I think by the end of it, that's very clear. I mean, definitely Jackson's the smartest. And Willis, mm. Willis is smart enough to understand that, like, there's something at play. He's super, so he can see the Yeah, the he's, starting to, he's starting to kind of, like, yield to his powers. He's starting yeah. to, like, become who he's supposed to be. But 100%... 
Sam Jackson is the genius villain. Like yeah. that because Glass if Glass isn't a genius villain, then he's literally just a dude whose bones break. <laughs> Rule number you know, three, like, the movie is driven by police, military, political, or mercenary figure. I guess security guard? He's not really mm, Nah. Not, it's a stretch. Mercenary is not really a security guard. And then rule number four, the movie contains a minimum of one explosion. You don't see the explosion, but the train does crash. It does. So technically you're kind of in that wheelhouse. It's an implied explosion. Yeah. Yeah. So those used to be the rules that we would like really stick to. Coming up today on the show, guys, we are gonna talk all your favorite things, fist pump moment, favorite line, or we did like an in-depth interview with Spencer here about his whole experience. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the, t- we don't have a ton of games prepared because we wanted to focus on our guest. This guy. Um, a quick thank you to Jacob Patrick and Mitchell Boker, brand new members of the Action Army of our Patreon. Guys. We salute you. We salute you, thank you so much. And uh, I suggest we get into the first segment of the show. Yeah, let's watch the trailer. Yeah. I don't remember I, I, this trailer that well. This I remember is, being like... This is uh, Michael Kelly, Doug Stamper, plays this role. Uh, yep. Talk to her. Totally. It's a great oh, actor. This scene is so great, the too. Room in the City I hospital. recognize this voice from uh, from House of Cards. Yeah. Are we yeah. still... Can the yep. audience still hear us? Yep. Uh-huh. Oh, awesome. Some questions. Where are you sitting on the train? Mm. Passenger car. Against the window. <laughs> yeah, Michael Kelly's been a in lot the of passenger car. car? I didn't realize it until I... We watched the movie like a year and a half ago. Really? That's who that was. Yeah. Yeah, big TV actor, tons of stuff. Big yeah. Movie actor too. He's so good. Yeah. I had forgotten when I went back to this that it came out so quickly after Six Sense. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was a trip. Knight's twenty nine yeah. when he directed this movie. That's so. Which means for Six Sense. Wow. Wow. You got that movie made when he was like twenty five. After Stuart Little, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right, Rick. Your train derailed. Took a curve too fast. A second train collided with yours after it derailed. And that Rosie O'Donnell movie. Which one? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. This, this is so funny because, like, I, I don't remember, like, seeing trailers for, you know. Yeah, and that movie, yeah. that cut like that was that. just there showing, like, the, the rescue yeah, workers wasn't in the movie, yeah. I don't think. Like oh, interesting. Well, 2000 also, one, like, we've, we've talked a lot about trailers. Different era for trailers. Train, right? You didn't just watch them all the time online and on Twitter. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Two, mostly you saw them in theaters. Totally. You don't have a scratch on you. There's a, another weightlifting scene that you can find on YouTube that is like a follow-up to... Oh, really? Yeah, maybe I'll mention it after you huh. watch. You're searching for me it's a really great scene if you look it up. Cool. Is it, it was just cut from the movie? Yeah. It is... Um, should I talk over this? I feel bad. No, no, it's good. Um, you can do whatever you'd like. So you could find me it's uh, David Dunn, like after the weightlifting scene in the basement. Are you ready? He's at Temple you? University, like in the locker room. Yeah. In the football locker room. And, you know, it's all these huge it's football cool. players. And he's, no one's really paying attention. He goes to the back and he sits down on the bench press because like we run out of weights at home. Right, uh, right He sits right, down right. on the bench press and he puts like 500 pounds. And just like, and then as he starts lifting, the like, you know, it's a really loud locker room and people are talking and making jokes. And and uh, and so he, he benches this, you know, insane amount. Yeah. And the music all of a sudden like swells up and drowns out. And he puts it up and he looks and he looks at it and then all of a sudden the music like cuts and it's dead silent and you see all these football players looking at him just staring being like, Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, and then they like start teasing, like, you can't even lift that. Right? <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a great scene. I, I think it, maybe they just cut it for time or something, but it's on it's on YouTube. You can check it out. Oh, that's awesome. It's, it's a really great scene. It's yeah. also I wonder if he cut that because he what like it's inconsistent with the character exposing himself with that much attention, and yeah. maybe it would have been worse if, if like because five hundred pounds, it's like an outrageous amount of weight for right. his Absolutely. size. Absolutely, yeah. So maybe maybe it's like we don't really too need much. To yeah, it's too definitively. Ask too many questions. Yeah. yeah, kind of a thing. I think it also just moves maybe like non essential too. Like you'd already yeah. established it. That he's super strong. It's still a right. great scene though. You, yeah, because the way that it happens. Because like curious, it's almost better that it's like because people that actually really lift weights a lot understand the amount of weight. But like two and three hundred pounds for a guy like that, his age, like saying you lift weights, fine. I, I, I don't know what I'm saying. I've just heard that's a lot of weight. That's an incredibly impressive amount of weight to just be like yeah. benching in your garage with your yeah. son yeah. spotting you. Like, even even me watching, I was like, holy shit! Like that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, for sure. Five, yeah. If it was like five or six hundred pounds in the in the basement or like in the garage, I think it would have like taken away from yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a uh, crazy amount of weight. So uh, we are getting the next part of the show, guys. This is thesis statement. So. So uh, each of us will come up with our biggest, boldest thought about this film. So a definitive statement, the best this, the only, the first, the last. We try to stay away from, you know, generic things like my favorite scene is this because anybody can have that opinion. We are movie experts. That's what we try to be on this show. That is what we call ourselves. (laughs) Uh, And so I'm going to jump in first with mine because... Let me go ahead and jump in first here with mine. (laughs) So 
I thought about this a lot after I watched this film, and, and Drew and I, you know, driving over here, we talked about it. But I think it's a fair statement to say uh, this is the most unheralded child actor run ever. Yeah. All time. 100%. And Be- we were like, do we even talk about it? Because it's Especially like a little... Especially think we'd be like, you're the greatest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, like, I was watching the movie, and like I said, it's like the fifth time I watched it, and mm. I texted Drew, and I was like... I was like, Spencer has, like, really great scenes in this movie. And I was like, this is, like, real acting. But at the end of it, I was like, he's, like, you know, as good or better than, than Haley Joel. Oh, like, we, were, I was yeah. like, we were going back and forth. I was like, it's, it's insane to me that he didn't get a nod. And I think the biggest reason you didn't get a nod was because Sixth Sense came out, like, the what felt year. like six months before, you know? But it's crazy. Like, like thinking about this, like, just the, the run of movies that you're in in such a short time, they're really significant. Your roles are, like, really good roles. I mean... 2000s crazy. You have great performances in 2000, like huge ones. Yeah. That I, I think it's kind of nuts that uh, because of Sixth Sense, it just seems like people they watch this movie with a different lens or something. Like there was an expectation as opposed to with Sixth Sense, it kind of came out of nowhere. Oh and, yeah, and then I'm actually just going to cut you off and jump in with mine, saying that because we talked about this too. Yeah. I was saying the worst thing that's ever happened to Unbreakable was Sixth Sense, and and. Unbreakable made a good amount of money. It made a great amount of money, and I think that's because of Sixth Sense. Honestly, I think it was because people were like, holy shit, this M. Night Shyamalan guy can do something yeah, different. Willis he can kind of blow my mind. Will is coming back. There's another kid. Who knows what kind of performance we're going to get out of this, but I think the reason that you didn't get an Oscar nod was because Haley Joel did. <laughs> and I honestly think that the reason this movie was kind of overlooked was because it just came out so quickly after. I didn't watch Unbreakable truly until like three years ago. Like, actually sit down and watch it from beginning to end. I'd seen it on TV, on FX, on Fox, whatever, in the background, but it was never the same thing. And this movie's so good. It's really good. It really is. And I, the thing I said about the scenes, man, I'm not exaggerating that. I really think they're the best scenes in the movie. Yeah, 100%. Like, no, that's, thanks so much. That's incredibly sweet of you guys to say. Um, it's funny looking back because, um, you know, I'm, I was just a kid you know yeah. like I, I go back and i and i watch it and you know obviously now when when i watch myself i think a lot of actors have this experience like you it's like not always super comfortable to watch yourself because you're thinking oh maybe i could have made this choice differently or but i can i can watch those you know like stuff from 2000 like pretty unencumbered because it feels almost like a completely different person sure. um but you know i go back and i'm like ah oh, the kid's kind of whiny in, in that scene or whatever <laughs> but um yeah it's funny I, I you know going back and and watching unbreakable for glass uh i hadn't seen it in so long and it was sort of wild to like sort of attach that you know period of my career and thinking about like even choices i made back then and and linking it to to my career now was um was it was pretty wild. Um, Do you so, remember your process at all? Like, for the scenes, like your preparation? It, it's funny. I actually, I pulled up, I found my old script. My mom found my old script in, in my parents' house in their attic. And there's, like, little notes in the margins. Like, Joseph is sad. And <laughs> Joseph loves yeah, yeah, his yeah. dad and stuff, which was just so hilarious. I brought it on set and, like, showed, showed everything. They're just, like, <laughs> they're, like, such simple, like, yeah, kid notes, right? Yeah, which yeah. is, like, kind of great. It's fun to see, like, my, you know, what was an evolving process uh at the time um but uh yeah i mean it, what, what a wild experience to be what, able to come back and play a role that you played as a as a child as a 12 year old or so. as a 13 year old were there things that <clears throat> like you said a year ago you went back and revisited unbreakable for yeah. glass were there things that you actually took from your character as a kid that you tried to bring to mm. glass because i'm assuming and actually not even assuming but i know most of our audience has seen glass and that's why they were all begging for unbreakable mm-hmm. um but yeah, I, I, like as an actor, I'm very curious to see like what you saw as 12 year old you that you were like, oh yeah, I should bring that back as 29 right. year old me, or, you know, 30 year old me. Right. <clears throat> um, well, you know, I think that it, it, it was interesting, especially when like Knight was like, I have a role for you, and and then not being able to read the script for so long, I think I had so many questions about like where is Joseph yeah. now. Um, but I think the one like really strong thread that exists from the original through to glass is um joseph's belief in his father and how you know, how much he loves his father so that that was sort of the the one through line the one constant from the first movie to this movie and then there was also another element that it's a spoiler it's not a very big one but an element it's it's very beautiful and very subtle yeah which is like why it's so good 
Mm. And I think it's a good moment <clears throat> for us to move on to our next yeah. segment because I know it's going to relate to that, which mm-hmm. is fist pump moment. So fist pump moment mm. from the time we have founded the show has been the fan favorite. It's that moment something happens in a movie. You kind of look around. You're like, are you seeing this right now? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. You're so excited to watch the rest of the movie. It can be anything. It can be the music, an interaction between characters, a touching look between father and son, which, which literally is, is probably Warrior. what we're talking about in this movie also. Actually, yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, going to hop in first on this one. <laughs> My fist pump is... I had a different moment, but I moved that to my favorite line. My fist pump is that scene. Uh, You don't know this about me, and we're going to get deep for a second, but (laughs) I didn't really have a dad growing up. And that scene for me, even with someone who didn't have a dad growing up, I still got choked up because I watched it. I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah. imagine that. Oh, he's imagine seasoned. if you knew your dad was a fucking superhero. An superhero. Like, an actual superhero. Yeah. And then, like, there's newspaper proof yeah. right there. And he's got, like, kind yeah. of a costume on. You can, It's not totally, but it's like, yeah, yeah he just looks awesome. And, yeah. like, you, your reaction, you get, like, this, like, you get the jaw drop, you get the gasp, you get the silent tear, you get the nod, you get the wipe. And then it's just, like... It's so <laughs> elegantly shot and directed and acted. But I remember, like, and I'll get to my, my original fist pump earlier, but I remember when this scene came around, I was like, oh, dude, done. Done. Yeah. Absolutely done. This is it. I thought it was going to be the moment I'm going to talk about later. I thought it was going to be the weightlifting scene in the garage. Nah. It's this moment. <laughs> so for me, and this is, I, so I watched this movie a year ago. Drew and I were both on this Collider uh, show called uh, Top 50 Superhero Movies of All Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Last year, they did it over the course of like four months, and they counted them down. It's like a Best Week Ever style and all the hosts. So they interview you about all the movies. And, okay. Um, Unbreakable was relatively high i think i want to say unbreakable was in the in the 20s maybe yeah like, i forgot that it was actually that high might be high teens but um i remember when i was doing that i watched the movie then and, and what i noticed then is the same thing i noticed this time which was like sometimes movies have a moment early on like in the first 10 or 15 minutes mm-hmm. where you're just like i am so intrigued there's no way i'm turning this movie off yeah it just gets you and as soon as he's off the train and michael kelly delivers that bit oh. and he walks out there's yeah. not a scratch on you. And you get that beautifully shot broken, scene. Not even a scratch on you. Where, yeah. the, where the body is convulsing and the blood's coming through. Ah, that shot's so cool. Such a cool shot. Yeah, yeah. and the blood starts like halfway through the yeah. shot. Yeah. It's a it's long like, oh. take. Yeah. And, and like, as soon as that happens and he walks out, you're like, what is this movie? Who is this guy? Yeah. Like, what, like, what am I watching and how can you turn it off? Yeah. And when movies have that those stakes set up like that, it's like... That's just the best. It like yeah. you succeed as a filmmaker when you are able to set something up in the first ten minutes. Yeah, like well, that. within yeah. the first ten minutes, your audience is like, "I need to know the end of this movie." Yeah, I right. have to. Um, yeah. For me, that's the fist bump. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Oh, you were saying you actually had one. I think I have one too. Yeah. yeah. It, I but really quickly though, it is like like going back and watching those scenes and like at, at eleven, I had no idea what a like what a master director in oh yeah night is and was and continues to be and you know obviously i knew sort of like the long takes and stuff but now being able to like watch unbreakable as a as a real film fan and and also um you know now getting to be on glass and like watch him do his thing like i never left set even when i wasn't working because i was like why would i go like hang in the hotel and i just like watch (laughs) nice Shyamalan directed movies anyways that shot's incredible that yeah yeah yeah. um my fist pump moment is uh is later in the movie when um he uh, it's been a sex since i've seen but i think he calls elijah and he's you know and he's like i you know i i wasn't i didn't i wasn't hurt in that car crash oh, and yeah. elijah's <clears throat> like okay so what do you and he's like what do i do now and elijah's like go out into the go world. where people are yeah go where the people are and and the um he continues talking and it shows David Dunn in the 30th Street station in Philadelphia in the train station. And it's like sort of his like, okay, I'm a superhero moment. And he's got the cape on and he's walking out into the train station. And the, the percussion comes comes yeah, in. It's like, yeah. it's like the score of this. You know, it's, yeah, and yeah, yeah. all of a sudden you're like, okay, now now he's a superhero. This is like this is the third act. Like yeah. this is he's a superhero now. Like let's in some you know, something's gonna happen here. Like what's yeah. he what's he gonna do with those powers? So I think that for me that's where it's like the sort of spine tingling. When he like moment. opens up his hands. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Like, and he like, so, sees like a bunch yeah. of people and then like he finally decides like oh this there's is like the one. There's the robber and, then, and there's the central yeah. predator and then yeah, finally totally. the, the one at the end is the guy who's like taking the Yeah. yeah. It's, that's, that's, that's a super cool scene. I also write leading into that scene um well, maybe I'll save it for favorite line. My yeah. favorite line in the movie comes actually in that speech. From oh, okay, cool. Really? Phone there, yeah. yeah. Um, um, really quickly with the fans, and this is just, I mean, again, like, we're not just here to make you feel good, man. These guys, they can say whatever they want. And they're all <laughs> talking, all their fist pump scenes, 
<clears throat> we got the weightlifting room scene. Or two people, three people are all saying it's all the weightlifting scene. Uh, oh. We got Richard Eric Jarvie, who's a big fan of the show. He's talking about uh, the look that Spencer gives the kid when he says, my dad can beat up your dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good line. <laughs> he's so like, funny. I don't know about that. Uh, the the gun scene, um, Jonas here is also a big fan. He's saying, my fist pump is when Willis is, is Willis's reaction to Spencer trying to shoot him in the kitchen. Um Oh, yeah, and Adrian here actually says his fist pump is the exact same as yours. Oh, so, nice. Cool. <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Uh, moving right. on to the show here, we always get to this next part. It's called Character Profiles. We talk about what the actors were doing leading up to this movie, and we're going to kind of breeze through this part. Bruce Willis, he just did Disney's The Kid and The Whole Nine Yards, which I actually love The what's, Whole Nine Yards. What's The Kid? I don't, I don't know uh, know. It's the yeah. one where he... I just remember it's like it's, him flying a plane on the cover, and he's like got this... No, it's, like, it's his face, right? It's like him like looking up, and it's got like kind of a gold cover, and it's like yeah, but there's the like kid. a plane in it because oh, it's yeah, like okay. I think he sees himself as a kid and he's like kind of this chubby like nerdy kid and, and it's Disney's video Disney's and video it's a Disney movie where the the younger version of Bruce Willis's character Russ comes and visits him in the present day right because oh. he's like an asshole or something hmm. like a like a jerk businessman I always, I always mix it up with the family man it's like kind of the same same time period same <laughs> right. sort of like <laughs> right, right, right. you know very different yeah films. very yeah. different <laughs> films that's Marissa Serafini up in the booth by the way Marissa a long time producer of the show and host of uh, Anatomy of a Movie how you doing Marissa I'm great gentlemen enjoying this conversation thank awesome. you so much for helping with those technical difficulties by the way of course um Next, we got the whole nine yards where he plays Jimmy the Tulip Tedeschi. Yeah, that's right. I love that movie. Uh, and do. then the story of us in '99, which I don't actually remember. This is coming off of an interesting part in Willis's career. Where I think you can pretty much define he was a superstar, but you kind of have the the different era, right? You have the like I'm an up and coming superstar starring in movies. People, tr and then he becomes an icon right around this time. Right yeah. around 2000 is when it's like for the next like five to seven years, everything he's in. It's just like Willis on the cover of a movie, and that's that's it. That's the movie. Sixteen blocks. Because I mean, yeah, exactly. Because all the stuff. Yeah. I mean, of course. Then when action movies change, like a lot of these guys, their careers had to change after 9/11. When you he stops doing Die Hard movies and it starts being like Tears of the Sun, and he's yeah. doing you know movies yeah. like that. The world didn't want to see. Uh, uh, they didn't want to see like us battling each other. on They our wanted own us soil. to kill terrorists. Yeah, what exactly. Became about and, interesting. And so this is, but this is a really interesting moment. Like I remember, Bandits is within a couple years of this, and like. Well, it's funny because you look at Sam Jackson's, and he did Rules of Engagement in two thousand, yeah. which is like the same type of thing. And yeah. so Sam Jackson, on the flip side, and, and guys, if you are interested in the career of Sam Jackson, Drew and I have an episode of the Action Guys coming up called "The Most Interesting Career in Hollywood: The Sam Jackson Story," and we're doing that on Collider's The Action Guys, It'll which would be Friday. we'll probably pick your brain for a little bit before you get out of here. Please but do, like, because I I got some. We Sam truly stories. believe that he oh, has I'd the love. most unique career in Hollywood. He's done 182 movies. He's worked since the 70s and like he's his we were just saying his biggest run has come between 60 and 70, which is he's more famous than 70. Yeah, he's the highest grossing actor of all time. He's I mean it's crazy. So Yeah. It's, <laughs> so uh but like at this moment, you know, this is again, it's the same exact transition. In 99 he does Phantom Menace. He he stars in Shaft, Rules of Engagement, Deep Blue Sea. His like next few years are are, are monumental. Everything he's in is like an event movie. Yep. Um, so both of these guys yeah. had an ideal moment. It makes sense. Sixth Sense was nominated for Best Picture. It made uh -huh. a ton of money. So Knight was really given like, who do you want? Name probably probably name who you want. You get right. that guy in the movie. I don't think anybody was going to say no to that guy. Yeah. To be in the movie. And then everyone's seen Willis and Sam Jackson together. Yeah, like numerous times, so it was cool to kind of totally. see this this really big juxtaposition between the two characters in Glass and David Dunn, and then of course we got our boy here, Spencer Treat Clark, and I kind of did a full rundown of what you'd done between this four year stretch, which is like again why I think you are truly one of the most overlooked child actors, and and again I think <laughs> it's amazing that you're working a lot now, but like what you did between '99, which was Double Jeopardy, which Ben I actually love that movie, it's I good. love Tommy Lee Jones and Ashley <laughs> Judd, <Yeah. laughs> like. Mm. Uh, and then Gladiator, of course, which is my favorite movie of all time, Unbreakable, which we're covering today, and then Mystic River, which Ben and I both think should have probably won Best Picture. And don't sleep on Arlington Road. And Arlington Same year Road, as Double right, Jeopardy. Right, right. You got, you got five there. Did Mystic River not win Best Picture? I no, it lost to Return of the King. But yeah. did Clint Eastwood got Best Director? Is that what? No, no I, think it, I think they only uh, won, uh, it was just the, the lead actor and supporting with Tim Robbins and gotcha. Sean. But the next year they gave him the makeup Oscar because he mm. won everything from Million Dollar Baby the next year. Gotcha, right. right. So, I mean, Mystic River, like, there, I have a lot of questions about all these movies. Yeah. Probably of every movie on this list, I would say I've gotten the most mileage out of rewatching Mystic River, though I love Gladiator. I just yeah. love Mystic River. It's I haven't like, rewatched it in ages. I should it's check it out. It's so good. And I, yeah. watched it. it's, I was just telling him, Spencer before the show started. It's so hard to watch. Yeah. You feel yeah. so bad for Tim Robbins. You're <laughs> yeah. just like, please, this guy's had it bad since he was 10. Yeah. Give the guy a goddamn break. Yeah. 
and then he doesn't get one. But so like this moment, you know, you're still you're you're pretty young in your career when you're doing this. But I know like you know the first thing you ever did was the TV movie, right? It, it was him or us with Richard Grieco. <laughs> That was the very first credit, right? Uh, yeah. I yeah. <laughs> love so, yeah. that you pulled that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so you're working pretty consistently there. Talk to us just a little bit about when does this start? Like, when do you get the first script that's like, I'm going to be huh. in a major, major um, movie? The first was Arlington Road, which is a movie with Tim Robbins and Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Good uh, movie. I like yeah, movie. Yeah, it's great, right? Yeah. I've, um, yeah. I, it's so funny, too, because when you're, again, when you're that age, like, you don't know whether it's a good movie or a bad movie. Right. It's like, so only is revisiting the, as an adult, I was like, this movie's Is this that the Bruce great. Beresford one? Or is um, that... No, that's Double Jeopardy. That's double that was Jeopardy. Uh, okay. Arlington Road is Mark Pellington. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, so I just I didn't really. God, man, I, I wasn't that conscious of right. Of I my, mean, you know, obviously parents, I was doing or... great things, and, and and you know, I was I got for Gladiator. I was in Malta for three months, so I was having all these wild experiences. But like, we lived in Connecticut. We lived outside of New York City, and like, yeah. And I was I wasn't doing like a ton of like you know I wasn't going out for commercials or really television. T- television meant moving to Los Angeles and dropping out of school and right. you know so uh, I had all these amazing experiences too. But these are all these are all adult movies too. So like when I I would go to school like I wouldn't really talk about it because you know, kids weren't seeing it or whatever. Right, so like I'd, kids were like, oh my god, Mr. River came out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like, so um, yeah, so I'd like dip out for a few months and so do so, so cool, who yeah as as he was kind of alluding to, how did you? Where your parents on top like of who it? picked like who the script? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. If, if someone's actually out there picking, and you look um, at the movies that you've done, you're like, I want that person's picker, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I got extremely lucky first yeah. and foremost. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't really know. It's, I mean, I, I my parents were pretty discerning. I remember like I, I got offered a, a role in The Cell. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and like, this so. is like a, a, a with Vincent D'Onofrio. Like you know, they were like, "This is maybe a little too dark for yeah, a movie." Yeah, that movie was nine year old or something. Yep. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, it, it kind of wild. Like I, it was, it, it is funny <laughs> seeing seeing like how close back to back these all these these movies. Oh, dude, were, we, were, so. we were shocked when we looked at it as well. It's just, yeah. I mean any actor would dream of that run to be in the even just to be in those four movies well because like yeah. so Five. so pretty cool <laughs> one of them so Lucky. one of them has to happen to yeah. put you on the radar yeah of the casting directors that like okay this is this is the mm-hmm. kid we should be paying attention to because like mm-hmm. right if like before this if it's tv like you book arlington road and then the yeah. people are talking and they're like, okay let's look at the kid who does this should we put him in this is that kind of the deal like you you're aware of that or like uh no i, I mean i wasn't like i wasn't like thinking about yeah, yeah right because like again if i wasn't if i wasn't like doing gladiator i'd been like playing you know, playing hockey and you know, right. doing sure, so sure. obviously like I loved acting, but we were also doing musical theater and okay. singing and and so it wasn't really um, you know obviously it's it's infinitely more fun to be on a, a film set and you right. know next to Samuel Jackson and stuff, but I you know I would have I wasn't uh, I wasn't like thinking about planning a career at this of course. this point in my life. So I knew that I loved acting and it was something that I I wanted to do. How did you get into it? Like who was it? Who yeah, so I have an older sister. She's two years older than me, um, and we did a lot of um, yeah, we did a lot of just like um, we did, first mostly through music, um, did like a lot of singing and stuff, um, and so that was my first exposure to it. Um, and my mom's a figure skating coach, so she had a, a student who did like a little bit of acting and stuff, and their mom was like, "You should take your kids into the city and stuff." So it was huh. just one of many activities that we did, and then um, you know you get one job, and it kind of leads to the the next and sure. um that's yeah. so crazy man. so we just really really enjoyed it so yeah and, and so you you shoot the two the two thrillers yeah that's very much like we drew and i talk about this a lot but like when you're at home alone mm-hmm. you're watching netflix and you're like it's late i don't want to watch something that makes my brain work too hard while yeah. i watch and it's always almost always something that could be considered like kind of a trashy thriller from the 90s there's yeah. like about 500 they used yeah. to make yep. a lot of them mm-hmm. right everything I grew from, up on them yeah 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 kiss yeah. the girls absolute power true crime like yeah. double, double jeopardy, jeopardy. there are yeah. all these yeah. movies where you're like i'm expecting on imdb this is going to be a 7.1 yeah. i'm expecting i'll recognize all the character actors uh-huh. and i'll probably see the twist coming about halfway through yep. and i'll absolutely finish the movie and yeah. i will love it and i'll yeah. love it and we, we both of us have watched more of those than probably any genre yeah so you do kind of two of them back to back they're like both pretty sweet both pretty rewatchable and Gladiator comes along. So when Gladiator comes along, Russell at that point is just becoming Russell Crowe. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't. He's not an icon yet. Yeah. He's, he'd like he had just done The Insider. He played Jeffrey Wigand. Like that was a big deal. Yeah. But Gladiator comes along, and Ridley's Wa- sorry, no, yeah, Joaquin's like I was gonna say Joaquin's a nobody. Yeah, he's not know, really known at that point. Um, and so the movie comes along, you get cast, and you find out you're gonna go to you said Malta for three months. Yeah. What's that like? Like where? Uh, it was. Um, yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, like I don't think that. Like I, 
I don't think m myself or my mom really knew how big the movie was until I remember <laughs> flew to Malta. I'd never been out of the country at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it was cool for yeah. my parents to have me have this experience. Did they go with you or no? My mom came with me and my dad and my sister and my cousin actually came out for like two weeks right in the middle. Cool, it was three cool. months. Um, so it was, you know, really fun experience for me to, as a child to get to travel and be in a foreign country and stuff. But I remember, you know, we, because of jet lag and stuff, we got to, um, they just come from either Morocco, I think from Morocco, they come from Morocco over mm -hmm. to, to Malta. They did the first two weeks in England and the next two weeks in Morocco and then the last three months, which I was there for in Malta. And um, it was like the first day that they were filming in Malta and I, I came to set and it was nighttime and I remember it was a full moon and now they would just CGI all of it. Yeah, right. yeah, so, yeah, right. And, yeah. and Gladiator was in the sweet spot where they could like have realistic CGI, but it was like hard to do and expensive, and required a ton of expertise and new technology so they, that like, wasn't really there yet. The yeah, they were right. touched. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah, yeah. made like fifteen acres of like of yeah the, the yeah. Colosseum and like the palace and yeah. all this stuff. And so I remember. Ridley Scott, but between takes, they were actually filming the scene where um, Joaquin is the slashing the Marcus Aurelius statue with a sword. sword it was yeah. a really intense scene, and um, Ridley Scott came out and met my mom and I and walked us out into the middle of the Coliseum on this middle of this <laughs> so full moon. Cool. And, it was, and my mom and I were like, "Wow, this this, this is a real movie. Yeah, it's a real movie. <laughs> it's a real movie Jack. So yeah, I mean, it was wild, and they had like. They had a full zoo, like tigers and wow. lions, and Dude. I was a pretty precocious, inquisitive little kid. So I'd hang out in the armory, and these guys would teach me how to make swords and stuff. And yeah, yeah it was it was an amazing experience. Yeah, so that's that's fascinating. Because yeah. um, we because I was gonna say we found out you know when we were doing the research for that film when we covered mm -hmm. it on the show a few years ago. It almost makes me wish I could cover it again with yeah. you here. <laughs> um, but yeah. we found out that like going into production, there was only like thirty pages of the script finished. Like a lot yeah. of it just changed as it was oh, going. Constantly, and, oh, constantly. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, it was one of those things, especially because you know, like I was saying, it's my favorite movie. It, it was kind of a shit show. Like looking at like the way the production went, the script, everything being re rewritten. I guess Russell and the writer had like they did not see eye to eye yeah, on almost that's anything. All, was all over my head. It's so yeah. funny hearing right. these stories now because it's like, you know, even on Glass, like Knight talking about like, you know, hanging out with Bruce and like you know when he would come out to LA and you know like, you know like Bruce partying and stuff. It's like yeah. all that stuff is like just was totally. So it's fun to have that perspective now. To now understand it. You're yeah, like, I'm like, an adult now. I can hang. Like yeah, 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 yeah. right. So. Uh, so Maria Menounos is the owner of this company. Yeah, her and Kevin founder. Undergara run it, and uh, she popped in here really quickly beforehand to say hello to you. And she actually wanted to ask a couple questions, and I just want to reiterate or regurgitate them on air, I should say. So we talked a little bit about what it was like seeing these people on set, but what was it like actually working with someone like Russell, who was like, you know, what we'd read was very egotistical on set. He like did his thing the own way, but you were a kid. You got yeah. Joaquin, who was someone who goes pretty hardcore method and plays one of the greatest villains of all time. And then right. we've got Oliver Reed, who was notorious for being incredibly difficult to work with on set. But mm. again, you're 12. So like, what was it work like working with these three these three dudes? Interesting. So I, I unfortunately didn't. I only interacted with Oliver Reed so briefly. Yeah. Because obviously, he passed away during um, during shooting. So I, I, I can't really speak to that. I, I didn't really have a, a whole lot of time. And you guys don't have any him. scenes together. And we don't have any yeah. scenes together. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was very sad when that happened. I remember everyone being on set and stuff, and it was it was all all pretty wild. He's such a talented actor. He's so good in that movie. Um, he great. He's so good. He's um, and then. Yeah. Russell uh, is and and Joaquin the two of them could not have been any cooler to me. Really? I mean, I think Russell's just like he's just like this guy that doesn't tolerate BS. Like, I mean, I, I obviously haven't had an experience with him, at least working with him as an adult. But I, my impression was that he's just like. He's just a guy who's like he just isn't a Hollywood. It's like a dude's dude yeah, that like just, wants to do it this way. Yeah, wants to do it right. So I think maybe um, his his that aspect of his reputation isn't like completely well founded but again I, I haven't had an opportunity also, to work with him as, at that moment yeah. he was peaking in terms yeah. of his yeah. in terms of his moment like we right. talk a lot about how actors like when you get to be that lead guy yeah you have a five to seven to ten year run where you're just like oscar after oscar after oscar yeah and that's his moment he's yeah. like yeah. he's in it and he had ta he's taking it as seriously as anyone yeah so that, and that was a huge production and he's amazing yeah, enough, yeah so he's, he's a guy he just seemed like a guy who doesn't, doesn't suffer fools but i know that like everybody I really liked that. him he set up a rugby league in malta and stuff <laughs> it's just like really 
<laughs> people really liked hanging out with him and being yeah. around Russell. And oh, he was, we're so huge sweet to me. fans of Crow. Yeah. And then Joaquin lived across the hall from me. He was like, it's so funny to think about because he was probably like, I don't know, like late twenties at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. He seemed like so, mm-hmm. so much older, but like he was just so wonderful to me he gave me a remote control car that i was just like <laughs> shredding cool. through the gardens of this like five star crazy hotel that right. they, they put me up with all the other yeah. people so i was like staying in this like insane hotel i'd go down into the, the the kitchen in the morning i was there for three months so i'd like yeah. get to know all these people and like instead of eating in the dining room i just like go into the kitchen and they'd be like hey spoons like serve me up it was, like, it was bizarre it was <laughs> so like dunston awesome. checks in it was like, i was just like yeah. living in this um, I'm so happy yeah. to hear that they were so, that great because, like, again, we love Joaquin, we love Russell, and, yeah. and yeah. obviously we're fans of Oliver Reed, but he's he's a little bit before our time. But mm-hmm. to hear that on my favorite movie set makes me so happy. Yeah, yeah, it's really no cool. Yeah, I mean, these guys. <laughs> it was like as a child too. You've like access that you like because you just don't think about. You know, it's like you just yeah. That's just you know you, yeah. So just it was innocent like, fun. Yeah, yeah. So um, but uh, yeah, it was cool and everyone's so nice to you know everyone. Everyone wanted to, especially now. Like I still like love to ask questions and stuff. But I don't really want to like bug people when they're doing sure. their job and stuff. But I remember like on Unbreakable, like Eduardo Serra, who's like an amazing cinematographer, was like teaching me how to like check the gate and like load the oh, camera cool. film. And like you only get that experience as an eleven year old. Yeah, because everyone else would be like, why the fuck is this actor talking to me right now? Yeah, like I'm working. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> or if you're Tom Cruise. Or, um, yeah, because <laughs> he like learns how to do everything. But um, yeah. but like okay, so at the time, like it's a it's it's pretty notorious that Joaquin was pretty tortured with that role. Something where Maria mm-hmm. was talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, he's in a very dark place. Is there anything you remember as a kid that you could even pick up on that darkness, like where you could feel that there was something maybe that was over your head? Interesting. Uh, I know that he was like very. Um I mean, his performance is he's so amazing he's so in good. that movie. I, I told you before the show, um, I was like, I didn't want to watch him ever act again because I thought he was just that evil. As, yeah. as a 12-year-old kid, it was it just blew my mind. But I do remember him, like, you know, after takes and them being like, hey, we're moving on, being like, going to Ridley and being like, I'm that was that was awful. That was terrible. I'm a hack. I'm you know, and and really just having to be like, no, like you, that was amazing. Like yeah. you got this. So I think that was maybe my only real window into him you maybe know. how much like self-hatred his character was kind of taking yeah. on probably yeah. yeah it's interesting totally so yeah it's interesting to hear you talking about i mean because again you look at these three movies and the directors of them you got ridley scott you've got m night Shyamalan, and then you've got someone named clint eastwood yeah <laughs> uh so again you're 12 years old but can you talk to us a little bit about the direction styles of these three guys or was it kind of just you know like what was it like being a 12 year old working with <clears throat> honestly three of the most notorious i mean Definitely yeah. two. No, all three of them are going to be some of the most notorious directors ever. Yeah. You know, all time, no question. All time, hands down. Yeah, uh, very different styles. All of them, I'd say. Um, Clint Eastwood is like the fastest. I mean, you hear this about him, but like it was, you know, you you think you're rehearsing and it was, you're actually doing a take and you know <laughs> you're moving on. Like you have to make sure you're you showed up and are prepared and because he's just like you're you leave set every day at like four p.m. which which never happens. Um, really? Wow. Yeah, I think he, he wants just, to like, get in and out, huh? Yeah, I just really trust the people around him and moves and, um, you know, and it was like great. I remember him like calling me like a little shit and stuff, like, you know, affectionately <laughs> and stuff. And just like, it's like that's going to be Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and Ridley is like just so, uh, he he's like, like the Gladiator in scope, in size. It's just like, you know, you're huge you're the head of like a corporation yeah to get that movie done and he's just like smoking his cigar and like <laughs> and i remember he he's uh he's really into architecture and, and i was and kind of am it w- was in architecture at the time as well and so he was designing his house and i remember he'd like pull out his you know his, his blueprints for you know and, like check him like between shots you know his, his architect <laughs> or whatever and he like makes and i was thinking what's going on there and at the end of um at the end of filming, he gave me all the um, the plans to the sets. They're literal, literal blueprints, like blue, you know, back wow, when right. you actually had the blue ink and stuff. Um, so and and they're they're yeah they're uh, they're still sealed. I gotta have to get them like framed and That's reproduced so and stuff. Cool. But I remember being in the production office and um, and him handing these over to me and like being aware of like other people in the office being like. You're just, ah! Yeah, you're just gonna give that to that 11 year old, 12 year old kid or something. So, um, and then night, I just sort of talked about it earlier, but um, you know, he is all the camera moves are so deliberate, and especially working on television now, where 
blocking is so fluid and you get into a space and you're like, you know, here's a scene and, you know, where, where do you want to sit? Where do you want to, like, Knight has all that figured out. He's like, okay, you're going to you're gonna walk in, you're going to stand here, the camera's going to move into you. And so it, it can feel a little bit restrictive as an actor, especially going, coming from, like, a place like Animal Kingdom where everything's shot and, you know, a lot of wides and very fluid and, yeah, right. and handheld. And, um, but you know that with Knight it's so deliberate and, like, the camera is telling the story yeah. with you um so he's he's so cinematic but he's also he's like a mentor to like so many people on set i know for me that that was true but not just the actors like the, i don't know I, he has like so many a lot of young people too or you know his editors really long young luke and um just like people that he wants to to teach and to learn and he's doing that while he directs which he is a, really cool it a really good energy that one time i've met him last yeah. year and, and i really like I knew I was doing the press line thing where I was asking questions he had answered before, mm -hmm. you know, because I was asking the question about making a superhero movie before yeah. its time and all that type of stuff. And, you know, he was very gracious with the answers. I could tell he had sort of given them before. Yeah. But I still was impressed even watching him come down the press line, the way he was interacting with the people around him. He was laughing. He was having a good time. Yeah. I know in those situations you're getting rushed around, so yeah, some yeah. people are a lot less agreeable than him. Yeah. But as I talked about on the show before, guys like Gerard Butler or him, like, they mm. just really get it. They're really personable. Yeah. And it's uh, it's memorable. You and that's, yeah, that sticks with people. Like, I, totally. Yeah. Like, I feel I have a very, like, a great affection for M. Night Shyamalan because of that experience yeah. that I'll share on camera for years. And, yeah. like, it's amazing when the difference between that and the guys that don't leave that impression right. and the way people talk about them and feel about them. Well, no one's better at that, of like just like being genuine and like enjoying himself more than Samuel Jackson. The guy's really just incredible and you, you've, in so, interviews and stuff. And like, we got to do some press in New York together and like, we did one uh, like Twitter interview where we're like, you know, they asked us a hashtag for all our character and everyone had sort of like, you know, yeah. I think mine was like, we believe or you know, something cheesy uh -huh. like that. Yeah. And, and uh, and Sam Sam's was like you know the uh, bones of glass like we out here kicking ass and he's just like fun <laughs> like just is like so he's so cool like you were saying that he gave uh he gave Knight like a little bit of a crap on set for some of like the because he's like yeah. not not like in a bad way but he's like very like you were saying yeah. everything that happens in a scene Knight it's like blink then do this yeah. then things like that yeah 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 totally so and and Sam can like Sam can give. You know, crap. Oh, of to course, you see. And nobody wanted to work on this movie more than Samuel Jackson. Like, really? One of the reasons why this movie made was because Sam, every time he'd seen Night in the past 20 years, was like, when are we, you know, when are we making that movie? Wow. So, um, and it's such a different, I yeah. love how different of a character it is for him. But, you know, Knight would be like, you know, Sam, do you want to like do another take? And Sam would be like, no, like you got it. Like, did you just see the, what I did? You know, he's so I'm cool. I'm done, like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so I want to check quickly. Hey, Marissa, do we have uh, do we have any time on the back end of this, or do we have a pretty close to a hard out? Ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Yeah. Great. Sorry, so, guys. You you don't have to cut me off. I'm no, no, dude. You're no, no, no. This, this is not about you. It's I'm, about... I'm reliving living stuff that I haven't thought about in years. I so honestly think we fun. just skip everything with production and box office and, and stuff like that. Because I think quickly, just so we can have an understanding of the movie, uh, mm. I do want to just make sure we do the box office and critical. And we can skip everything All right, else. I'll breeze through those two right now. So this movie was uh, produced by Buena Vista. It cost seventy five million dollars to make. It was released in November. 22nd of 2000. It was a nice Thanksgiving family movie. It grossed $95 million domestically and an additional $153 million worldwide for a grand total of $248 million. And it actually opened at number two, even though it had made $30 million, but that was also Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas yeah. in mm. week two, still making $52 million. Oh. This is what's kind of shocking about this movie. So this has a 7.3 on IMDb, which is usually a little bit more critical than Rotten. Uh, Rotten, all critics give it a 69. Top critics give it a 54. And the audience gives it a 77. And we all know what I'm going to want to talk about. It's that 54. Why the hell does this movie have a 54? Why is it that half the critics that saw this movie liked it and the other half didn't. Did well, they not know what they were signing up for? Was the movie ahead of its time? Why? I think, you know, I'll jump in quickly with just my thought on this. And you and I talked about this on the way over, but when I when this movie came out, I was 12 years old, and I was the biggest comic book fan in the world. I was working at a store for store credit. At the time, superhero movies and comic book movies were such a not a thing yet that if something came out that even had to do with the subject, it was like we were getting like this, this, this nugget. You know, it was like all, all my friends at school was like, Unbreakable, it's a comic book movie. You should see it. It's a comic book movie. Right. You know, Blade's a comic book character. And like kids yeah. didn't even know Blade was a comic book character. This movie wasn't advertised and then you as talk a about, superhero movie. You talk about superhero movies, there hadn't been any yet, like big ones. Yeah, it was like the X Men came out the same year. So mm -hmm. I think when this movie came out, like it's just marketed as kind of like 
two stars and this thriller that you don't really know what it is. And I think that critics maybe went in with an expectation for it to just be, I don't know, like uh, like The Sixth Sense Part 2. And they weren't as satisfied with the twist. And it, it was like trying to be a superhero movie without being a superhero movie, outwardly maybe. Not really totally sure. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, because like a lot of times when movies get like a lower rating, they also don't make a ton of money. But this movie actually made a decent amount of money. Like people were watching this movie. So that's really what doesn't make sense to me. And I know you were so young when it came out, Spencer, but like... Do you remember kind of hearing any of the, like the the backlash? Because this movie was is actually pretty well received by everyone I speak to. In retrospect, yeah. it's way, mm. way, way more loved than it was at the time. It's I probably think. his like number two movie. I would agree. If yeah. it's not number two, it's number three. Then you know, and it's so that like, split. yeah. yeah. yeah so a... why do you, why why do you think personally it was re- received so poorly? I guess is I don't know. The maybe they thought like the little kid was pretty whiny. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure. I. Uh... Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really privy to it then, but it's, yeah. you know it's cool now as an adult for people to go back and watch, uh, you know, see it before seeing Glass, and uh, that's one of the things that's so cool about Glass coming out now is that people are very well versed in the genre. Yeah. yeah, so it's sort of interesting to see how audiences are perceiving it differently. Yeah, for sure. So I know there's a bunch of fan questions, and the last thing, the last thing I want to do before we answer a few of them is favorite mm-hmm. line, just because I think mm. uh, I'm sure you've thought about it over the years. I was going to say originally that my favorite line was the, I'm going to go work out with my dad, because I think it's a funny (laughs) line, and I really enjoy that. But I actually think my favorite line is when it's in your favorite scene. It's It's when the music comes back in, and he says, go where people are. It won't, he says something like, it won't feel like, you know, it won't be easy or something, because life doesn't fit into little boxes made for comic books. He has some line like that. It's like yeah. life, life doesn't fit into little boxes made for made mm. for a comic book. Mm-hmm. And I love that line because I love it's like such a, it's that's kind of a metaphor for the whole movie, right? Like you're you're kind of watching something that you weren't really sure was a superhero movie, and now you're quite sure it's a superhero movie. Now yeah. it's now it's making sense. He's wearing a cape at this point. This is what he is. So that's what you didn't know, realize. It doesn't fit into the billing of this is X Men. This is called Unbreakable. You weren't right. sure what it is. Yeah. But it is. That's a comic book. Mm. That's cool. My my favorite line isn't actually spoken. It's the written note that's left on the car, which is originally my fist pump moment because uh, yeah. it's, you know, how many days of your life have you been sick? And you're like, oh, my God, he's going to find out he's never been sick. Yeah, you're so yeah. You're like, I can't <laughs> wait for this to unravel. Yeah. Uh, but it's actually just the idea behind it because, like, first of all, I love I love that Sam Jackson was the one that pushed for purple and that he pushed for the glass cane. I think that's super cool, like, actor choices that he made. He pushed for it and the purple lightsaber at the same time. Yeah, and the, he got both. <laughs> he got everything he wanted. <laughs> so funny. Uh, I love, as weird as it is, I love the, uh, um, what's that word? The the stationary, right? That's the word? Yeah, that, that it's pe- written yeah, on I love the edition. color, I love the limited edition, I love the font, but I just love the idea of, you know, how many days have you ever been sick in your life, and you're like, oh my god, he's about to find out he's a superhero. Yeah. Like, this is the craziest thing, and I love the boss, because he's like, oh, you got a train wreck, you, you bump your head, you got smarter, and you're like, yeah. what the hell are you talking about? It's like, I'm going to give you a raise. You've never been sick. You're like, oh, my God, he's a yeah. superhero. Because he keeps teasing you and then diffusing the energy. Yeah, teasing you and totally. then diffusing the energy. And that's, yeah. yeah, it's a nice slow burn. Yeah, yeah that's that, that's awesome. Do you have a favorite line or not off the top of your head? I do, yeah. yeah? Oh, oh, in regards to the cane and the wheelchair yeah. and all those, like, props. And I just had him, like, in his house, like, still. And he had, like, pull him out for glass. You know? Really? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> cool. Like, all these props. You dust off. Um, I... I, I mean, I'm partial to the end of, like, because of the kids. They, yeah. they call me Mr. Glass. It's yeah. just, like, so wonderful. But I think sort of, like, honorable mentions was um, I'll just shoot him once, which yeah. is my line. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then there's a little line. It doesn't really pertain to the rest of the movie, but it's a little joke with a re- when um, – Bruce, when David Dunn goes to uh, to initially ask, you know, how many days have I been sick? There's a, an office assistant in there. She's this like she's just staying oh, on the computer. That yeah. lady, yeah. She's like proceed. Yeah, proceed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he, she goes, I almost died once. Like. Horse trampled, almost trampled yeah. me to death. And then it's like this li- long pause, and she goes, had him put down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. And it's his, so and his answer, dry. His answer is like, that's a very sad story. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think in the whole so. movie, you're like, that lady is the only one who can kick David Dunn's ass. Yeah, it's that totally. lady. Yeah, yeah. The other, yeah. The other line in that in that scene that you were talking about uh, that I love at the end is when he's yelling at him. You know how you always know because he's the opposite of the hero? Yeah. And then he finally says, I'm not a mistake. I'm not a mistake. Because it's yeah, a great I mean, line because it's also from Creed, which is great. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's a great line because it's like, there's your, there is your, your, you know, that's your character. That's, that's sort of echoed in Glass too when she's, yeah. she's like, you were spectacular. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, we only have a couple minutes here, so let's speed around some of these these fan questions. God, there's so many. We actually covered like a, a lot of them on the show, just kind of talking about it. Uh, one that I actually really like here. Well, Christian Hess just wants to say that your performance in Glass is one of the favorite that he's he's seen in theaters in a very oh, long thanks, time. Christian. He, I appreciate that. He requested specifically for me to say that, so I got you, boy. Uh, the other one, I think this is kind of a cool question from. Um, from from Jonas, he's actually asking if you were to play a lead or a title character in any other superhero movie or universe. Like, is there anyone that you'd like love to be a oh, part of? Interesting. Um, it's not with Agents of Shield, you played in that world too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean more like yeah, I was feature a bad film guy wise, with, with no powers. Uh, but yeah, so like if I if I could play a superhero, man, I don't know. Like I love. I love action movies yeah. so much. <laughs> like again, like I grew up on Die Hard and yeah. True Lies and stuff. So I think that like there was a little stunt in Glass that got actually that got um, uh, that got taken out. I put a little picture of it on my Instagram yesterday, but it was just like me getting pulled back, and that stuff is just so fun. So I don't. It's like yeah. sort of a workaround to that question, but like. I love incorporating stunts and all that yeah. stuff. Obviously, it's great to sink your teeth into a great character yeah. and stuff, but it's just like, you know, we're I'm, as a fan of film, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like so cool to be around that, like that moment of stepping into the Coliseum and like seeing, wow, this is all for, we're just going to point a camera at this, and then this yeah. is all going to be gone. So, you know, to get to do that stuff, and like, I remember on S.H.I.E.L.D., like the first day, they were yeah. driving a car through a warehouse and like explosions and stuff. Right. Like, this yeah. is awesome. It's so fun. Uh, you talk so. a lot about uh, Knight and, and how great he's been with you as a director, as yeah. a kid and as an adult. Is he? Did you feel like a big difference from from child to adult? You, like right. not only just because you got older, but I mean he got older too, so he he had yeah. to have evolved and matured. Yeah, I mean he was twenty nine when he made Unbreakable. Well, I said that earlier, but um, there's, I like look at pictures of us from Unbreakable, and it's like we both looked like children. Yeah, yeah. so funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I mean he was like he he he's so with it and like. Um, the really high morale on those sets. I think everybody like wants to show up and, and do their best for him. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I talked about it earlier, but I just didn't have the sense of like, I just didn't know what a master he was and how amazing that like, he uses the camera so effectively. He would always say like, you know, he would, he would give, you know, he'd like coax the camera department along and be like, guys, like, don't, you move too early. Like, just because I told you to move on this line doesn't necessarily, like, you gotta, you gotta wait until you feel that moment. Like, the cameras yeah. help telling the story. And, right. like, he's, you know, he's a true fan of film and a lot of that stuff was, was sort of lost on me. But, you know, he's, as a person, he's been amazing then and amazing now. It's fun to see, like, this whole other side of a man that you don't get to, you know, really sure. be privy to when you, our little so and so all that cool. success in 20 yeah. years it's it's super we cool we get to, to hang out at night's did. house and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> like yeah um any other questions or are you, we, uh, we, we, we kind of got to wrap it up so uh is there anything that you personally is there anything that you want to promote anything that you're doing right now that we all need to be knowing about need to talk about watch obviously go follow him on twitter i know it's on the lower third but anything else going on in your life man um well i'm i just i just started uh season four of animal kingdom our, yep. our show on tt tnt and I'm really excited about um that should be coming out in may and um but first and foremost, I mean, people should go out and see Glass. Like, yeah. I, it's yeah. so fun to see the whole. I mean, Split was so incredible too. Just yeah. to see everything come full circle, and um, it's been so fun for me to watch as people, you know, experience this all over again. It's you know, it's just the uh, opportunities like this to revisit something that like yeah, you know, I just, sort of like almost not close the book on that chapter, but it's just been so long. It's literally yeah. another I don't lifetime. Get to think. I mean, literally that yeah. was like middle school for me, and I don't like you don't. When, how often do you think about like stuff that was going on? And, We're happy to open that chapter so. with you anytime. Man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm out. so thrilled yeah. to talk about it. So I really appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, of course, man. Thank uh, you so much, and thank you guys for questions and stuff and for. For tuning in, yeah. And guys, watch Animal Kingdom. It's a really great show. I think is my friend Christina still on that show? Yeah, she's, she is. She's coming back. Yeah, I yeah. I think that I don't know. I'm I think yeah. spoiler. Uh, but okay, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, it was yeah. a really great time, man. You know, follow along with the show. Uh, check out Patreon.com/slash/TeamAction. There's exclusive content there all the time. Even though there's a whole traitor storyline, we'll talk about that later. He's a traitor. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, follow along. S Street Clark <laughs> at Andrew Guy at Ben Bateman Media and. Uh, you can follow me, or no, S Street Clark? No, yeah, S, S Street, S -street Clark, Clark. Clark. Okay, I was right, okay. First and then, initial, uh, middle name, last name. At Team Action Show is the Twitter for the show, and we'll be back same time, same place next week with one last thing we have to do, and it's called The Pitch! Wow. So it's going to be one of two things. <laughs> 
next week on the show, guys. Um, what we're kind of doing moving forward is we're synchronizing the action guys and Collider with the movies we're covering here. So there's a relationship between the two. We mentioned the Sam Jackson show. You can check out tomorrow. Yes. And this week Friday, will be a thing tomorrow. about uh, yeah. This thing will be a, a thing about like wilderness survival type of stuff. So it'll either be the Gray or this new Mads Mikkelsen movie called Arctic. Mm-hmm. Uh, one or the other. We're seeing Arctic on a press screener tomorrow. So we'll tell you if we're going to cover it or not. But uh, tune into Action Guys next week. It'll either be the Gray or Arctic next week on this show. And thank you, Marissa. Thank you to the studio. Thanks to Maria and Kevin for uh, putting this on. And yeah. thank you, of course, to Spencer for coming by. Round of applause. Thank for you, guys. Yes, thank you so, so much, man. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Bye, everybody. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.